Good morning, everybody. Um, today is Friday, March the 24th, 2023. And uh, this is Michelle with Sweet Home Heaven. And um, today's chapter reading is from Ephesians chapter 2 um, with excerpts from a New King James Version Modern Life Study Bible. If you guys are in need of a good study Bible, I'm going to tell you this one here it is awesome um i'll show you it has all sorts of excerpts outside of um, your scriptures when i say excerpts that's what i'll be reading to you guys but um there's just a plethora of knowledge um <clears throat> in here as well as um there are short biographies let me see if i can show y'all one there's short biographies all throughout the uh okay yeah here's one so, um, this is one, uh, oh, just one I was close to. It kind of gives a description um, of uh, what this person went through and their uh, walk as a Christian. The, the, uh, the good things and the bad things that they overcame. All right, here we go. Um, forgive me because, um, yeah, I haven't been faithful in doing my Bible reading and I, honest to God, I can really, really feel it. Um, you know, our salvation is not dependent upon what we what we do. However, um, if you want to live a life that's uh, where you're at peace and have joy, you must you have to take time to be spend time with the Lord. And so, before I even do these videos, I do my. Um, my prayer and my devotional and my Bible reading before I read to you guys because that's my personal time but I would like to share with you as well and hope that you will be um it will bless you as much as it blesses me just reading a chapter a day so why do I read a chapter a day Juliet's about to bark why do I read a chapter a day well I'm 52 and um um embarrassed to say that I've never read the Bible all the way through. So when I started to do these videos, which I felt God um, pushing me in that direction, where it goes, I don't know, but I felt, like, I felt like he was saying, you know, why don't you share that, that reading? A lot of people may not have time to um, sit down and read it, but if, if they can play the video and hear it, um, then that's good. It's not this. Is, it's not about me. It's about him, and it's about you guys. Because which it blesses my heart to do this, but it's about uh, planting seeds. So that said, here we go. But before I get going, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And over on my other channel, Michelle Lokerson Vlog, which is in the description, um, over there I read the devotional every day and scripture references and uh, the Lord's Prayer and John 3.16. So, all right, here we go. I have to get back in the swing of all this because it's funny how you, when you get out of stuff. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter two. And you, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The by grace you have been saved, that was in uh, parentheses. <clears throat> and raised us up together, made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is of the gift of God, not works, lest anyone should boast. <clears throat> for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared for beforehand that we should walk in them. Therefore, remember that you, once 
Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by which is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel <clears throat> and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Amen. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the en en enmity, E-N-M-I-T-Y, it's one of those words that's hard to pronounce. <clears throat> and he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being chief cornerstone, and whom the whole body, whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also are being in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Alright, scripture reading. I mean, um, the excerpts it this deals with Ephesians chapter two, verses fourteen through not eighteen, breaking down walls. When Paul wrote about breaking down the walls that divided divide us, he may have been thinking of Antioch, a city that literally walled off the four dominant ethnic groups of its population, Greek, Syrian, African, and Jewish. <clears throat> Yet the Christians there overcame these divisions and commissioned Paul to take the gospel to Asia Minor. Um, and you can read further on that, the uh, Antioch model, which is in Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. Okay, this deals with Ephesians chapter 2, 19, 19 through 22, a community temple. Paul saw the community of Christians in Ephesus as a monument in the making. Apostles and prophets were the foundation of the building, and Christ was its cornerstone. Jews and Gentiles were chiseled into living bricks and mortar until the entire group would become God's dwelling. Suppose Paul visited the churches of the modern world, not the physical beings, but the people. Would he find us to be a spiritual monument in the making? What would enable us to put aside other cares and concerns in order to become a holy dwelling of God? That's a very valid question. <laughs> what would enable us to put aside other cares and concerns in order to become a holy dwelling for God? Um, I, I don't normally, you know, I don't normally give a lecture or anything, but um, I know this firsthand, Juliet. I know this firsthand that uh, the the enemy is great at deception. He's great at um, distraction. And as you get older and you grow in you grow spiritually in the Lord, you'll see those. Now, is it, e is it easy to always overcome them? It's not. Uh, here I am. I, I mean, I'm 52. I've been walking with the Lord since 2007. And um, there have been times I have been on and off, I'll be honest with you. But anywho, um, you know, my heart is always for the Lord. But sometimes my outward actions do not always uh, reflect him. And for that, I have to ask for forgiveness. So anyway, you guys have a wonderful Friday, and I will see you tomorrow. All right? Talk to you later. Oh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And check out my other channel, Michelle Lokerson Blog, where I read a devotional over there from Jesus Calling by Sarah Young. All right? Love you all. Bye.